It's now my pleasure to introduce Mrs Justice Nicola Davis. She's presiding judge of the Wales Circuit and was the youngest person to be named as Queen's Counsel in Wales. In an exciting career, she has acted for the Department of Health during the Mad Cow Disease Inquiry and also as Defence Counsel in the trial of Dr Harold Shipman. Nicola was the last ever head girl of Bridgend Girls Grammar School, so we can fairly say that she is a lifelong role model. She's a friend to Silex and we are very pleased to have here today. Ladies and gentlemen, Mrs Justice Nicola Davis. Madam President, thank you. A good day for the Welsh today. My thanks to Silex for inviting me to give this address today. And can I say how very good it is to see so many present graduates, those who are going to be admitted to the fellowship of the Institute, and all family and friends. Such a special day for every single one of you. May I offer my congratulations to each of you here today, either to become a graduate of this institute or to be admitted as a fellow of the institute. We know it's a special day and an exciting day because it's the start, isn't it? The start of what? There are now so many possibilities before you within the legal field. It is for you to think in the years ahead what opportunities there are and those you want to take up. You know already of work you have done and work that will develop in your role either as graduates or as chartered legal executives. And what of beyond that work itself, all those other possibilities? Let me deal with just one, and that is judicial appointment. By that, I mean sitting as a part-time or full-time judge, either in a court or tribunal. Perhaps not the first thought you have today, but certainly one for the future. I can tell you that when I graduated in law and then latterly qualified as a barrister, I had absolutely no thought whatsoever of becoming a judge. But my path to the law was less than straightforward. As your president has said, I'm from Wales. I was born in Llanelli. I went to school in Bridgend. And I am particularly proud of the fact that I was the last head girl of Bridgend Girls Grammar School. I was a product of the state education in Wales. My A-levels were English, history, and music. And there was one route that was available, and that was teaching. But I really thought others should be spared that one, because I would have been a hopeless teacher. And I didn't really know what to do. And so I thought around and chatted, and law seemed rather glamorous to me. It was particularly glamorous, because in truth, I knew little about it. And so that's what I did. I read law at Birmingham University. It's fair to say that I didn't exactly enjoy the study of law, and I suspect I wasn't the best of students either. And come the end of those three years, I was quite determined that I'd had enough of law, and I was applying to industry to be a graduate trainee. Thus it was I found myself at Unilever for the last days of interviews and testing. And the gentleman who was then the company secretary himself a barrister, took me on one side. And he said to me, look, I know you think you've had enough of law, but he said, there's far more of a lawyer in you than you're presently willing to acknowledge. He said, I think you should stick with it. Well, all my chums from university were coming to London, and I've always loved those bright lights, so I came to London. Then I thought, well, if that's what Mr. Keir in Unilever said, I'll train to be a solicitor you can see how well thought this all was. So I did my solicitor's exams, and I began in articles in a small firm next to Somerset House. But I didn't like sitting behind a desk all day. I just was feeling I wasn't doing exactly what I wanted to do. And so, for the second time, 
I left law. And this time, I went to work in the city as an investment analyst. It was great fun. For the first time in my life, I earned money. I stocked up the wardrobe. The handbags did well, I can tell you. <laughs> and I did that for six months. And I was enjoying it, but I knew <clears throat> I wasn't going to be satisfied doing that for the rest of my life. And when I'd been in articles, I had seen the bar and I really had liked what I'd seen. The court work, the advocacy, but really it seemed so daunting and there was an issue for me and it is one which continues and I see it in others to this day, it's confidence. Because it was daunting, this was the 1970s. I'm a woman and all I can say about the prejudice in those days was it was in your face. People weren't afraid to tell you. I was the product of state education. I had not gone to Oxford or Cambridge, and I didn't have a single legal connection. I was the first in my family to go to university. And all those things were stacking up, and I thought, I won't stand a chance. But I tried to get into industry. I tried the solicitor side. I tried the city, and still, I was hankering, and I thought, well, if you don't give it a go, you're gonna have a chip on your shoulder about this. And so I plucked up what courage I had. I joined Gray's Inn, it's the Welsh Inn, and on I went and did my bar finals. I did my pupillage in a set called Carpmail Building. I was taken on, and it is the set that I remained in for 30 years. It became Three Sergeants Inn, and is today Sergeants in Chambers. And I'll tell you what prejudice was like. On the day I got my tenancy, I thought, this is it. This is the start. And my senior clerk, who, may I say, was a huge supporter in the years that followed, took me on one side. And he said, Miss Davis, he said, I just want you to understand. At the moment, he said, it's all fine. And for the first four or five years, it will be all right. But then he said, you'll see the gentleman in this set, gentlemen, in this set, doing work that you can't do. It's called civil work. He said, it's not that I don't want you to do it, it's solicitors won't have you. And you know, I didn't have the confidence to say, come on, Tom, I'm not having that. I thought, all right, if that's what it's like, I'll do it my own way. I'll build up my practice, I'll make my own mark, and that's what I did. And for my first 10 years, I was a generalist. Ours was a young set. Whatever work came through the door, we did. It was the most fantastic training, and it's training which stands me in good stead today. It was a couple of years ago, I was sitting in the administrative court. It's the public law court where government decisions are challenged. And for reasons that I will not trouble you with, the hearing turned into a bail application. I was the only person in that courtroom who had ever done a bail application. So those were 10 terrific generalist common law years, and then I began to specialize as the work of Chambers began to specialize, namely that of medical law. And that was my field throughout my years as a senior junior, and thereafter in Silk. I became a QC in 1992, and in 1995, I began the first of the part-time sittings, initially as a recorder, and then latterly as a deputy high court judge. And it was in January of 2010 that I was appointed to the high court bench to sit in the Queen's Bench Division, which is the common law division, I also sit in the Administrative Court, I sit in the Court of Appeal Criminal Division, and as your President has already mentioned, I now am one of the presiding judges of the Wales Circuit. So why did I apply? I would loved my years at the bar, I loved the casework, I loved the advocacy, and I loved the people. But there came a time when I was ready for a change. I'd enjoyed sitting. What I enjoyed more than anything was the neutrality, 
no longer fighting someone's corner, able to sit there, listen, and then strive to reach the right decision. And without, I hope, sounding too precious or too pompous, there was a sense of public duty, a sense of putting something back. So it's over five years now that I've been a judge. As presiding judge of the Wales Circuit, I spent half of every legal term in Wales, sitting both in North and South Wales, doing both criminal and civil cases. The work is fascinating, challenging, and the people every bit as friendly and supportive as they were at the bar. I'm in no doubt that it was the right decision, and I feel privileged to have been able to make it. But here is the point. A full-time judicial appointment was not something I had even begun to contemplate, not even 20, but 10 years ago. As you will have gathered, my path was not a conventional path. My background was not a conventional background. And the really good news is that at every level of the judiciary, there are now far more people like me with my background. The judiciary really is becoming more diverse. And can I step to one side for a moment and offer my thanks to Silex for the work that they have done in supporting the judiciary in our many events and in our quest for greater diversity. Silex has been a real force for the good. Thank you. But within the judiciary, there is a real drive for diversity, and it comes from the top. It is led by the Lord Chief Justice, and it is very much a part of the thinking of senior judges and those who work both within the courts and the administration. As I said at the outset, today it's unlikely that many of you are thinking about judicial appointment. But the fact is this, you don't know what the future holds and you don't know how you'll feel in the years ahead. In achieving what each one of you has done today, You've demonstrated ability and a willingness to work hard. With such qualities, you can move still further forward. And I hope in moving forward, you will do so with a belief in yourself. Don't be held back by lack of confidence. Even if you're not feeling it, pretend. We've all been there. Silex presently has two of its members sitting as judges. Let's see if more can make their way into a career that is both rewarding and fulfilling. And therefore, to each one of you, may I say well done and very good luck in the years ahead. Thank you.